Hello friends, Namaskar. The financial year 23-24 has now begun and therefore lot many salaried employees are under worry or have a question before them to resort as to which slab rate they are going to opt for from the perspective of TDS deduction by their employer. Not only that, even the other assessees, that is the other class of assessees who are individual, may have in their mind as to decide which slab rate would be appropriate for them, more tax heavy to them for the financial year 23-24, that is assessment year 24-25. So with this background, I have created this video which has the topic which slab rate to opt for, new or old. Through this video, my dear friends, I am trying to put up my thoughts on the topic that you should understand when the new regime would be beneficial and when the old regime will be beneficial. So straight away in one line, nobody can say that, okay, you may opt for new one or you may opt for old one. This is a factual circumstance. And after going through this video, you may be able to know that, okay, in given facts and circumstances of your case, what do you think? Whether you are going to be governed through the new regime or you are going to be governed through the old regime. So let's move further in this discussion. The first point where from I want to begin is the comparative slab rate for the assessment year 24-25 that is financial year 23-24. I have tried to put up again the slab rates. The first bifurcation is that of the old slab rate and this bifurcation is of the new regime or new slab rate. Under the old slab rate even for the financial year 23-24 my dear friends up to 2.5 lakh rupees tax liability shall be nil. From 2.5 lakh to 5 lakh, it will be 5%. Above 5 lakh to 10 lakh, 20%. And above 10 lakh, 30% tax rate shall occur. So if I assume that this chart represents to a person who has total income of rupees 15 lakh, then his total tax liability or her total tax liability for the financial year without any health and education says would be 2 lakh 62,500 as per the whole regime. However, if we determine the tax liability of such person under the new regime, then up to 3 lakh tax liability shall be nil. Above 3 to 6, it shall be 5%. 6 to 9, it will be 10%. 9 to 12, 15%. 12 to 15, 20. And above 15, it will be 30%. But since in the given example, I assume that the person's total income is up to 15 lakh. Hence, I have calculated the tax liability to be zero. So a bare comparison shows that under the new regime, the assessee will be saving a tax amount, huge tax amount of 1,12,500. But if this is the ultimate scenario, nobody would like to watch this video further. Why? Because certainly this shows the result that the new regime will be more beneficial. But that is not the case, my dear friends, because the total income computation under the old regime as compared to that under the new regime is a totally different perspective. So one has to understand that how your total income under the old regime and how your total income under the new regime will be calculated. And above that, you have to apply this slab rate to compute your final tax liability. So let me take you further to understand that how the total income related criteria under these two regimes would differentiate. So my dear friends, the first point of this comparative difference is to understand the deductions which are not available under the new slab rate or new regime. There are certain deductions, my dear friend, which are not available at all under the new regime. One, HRA exemption, because mostly salaried employees do claim HRA exemption. LT exemption is also not available. Similarly, there are certain exemptions provided under section 10 clause 14. They are also not available. Thirdly, interest for home loan on self-occupied property for which usually employees or assessees claim 2 lakh rupees deduction is also not available under the new slab regime. And the deductions which an assessee would be claiming under chapter 6a may it be ATC, ATD, ATE, ATG, ATU, etc. are also not available under the new slab regime. So this is the biggest thing which would let you know that why your total income under the two regimes would be different. So if somebody who has these deductions to claim his total income under the old regime would be lower. 
and if the total income is lower the chances are high that the old regime may be beneficial and if somebody did not claim these deductions or do not wish to claim these deduction then probably because the assc has not contributed assc has not made the payment then the tax liability under the new regime may be more beneficial so if the question is put up who should offer old slab rate who should offer old slab rate then my answer would be if an assc wishes to avail the benefit of hra exemption lt exemption home loan interest contributions which are made under section 80c contributions which are made under section 80 ccd 1b that is nps 50000 health insurance premium which is paid by a person or health uh, expenses medical expenses incurred on the parents etc other various deductions like atd ate atg attta then it is better to go for the old slab rate rather than going into the new slab now my dear friends let me establish my understanding with the help of an example say in this example for the assessment year 24 25 i have taken the same salary figure of 20 lakh under the old and new regime with a 50000 standard deduction in both the scenarios here and net salary income 19 lakh 50000 year 1950 year if i assume that the assc has contributed for home loan related interest up to 2 lakh whole 2 lakh i am putting up here then i am further assuming assc is also earned saving bank interest so the gross total income under the two regimes is different by rupees 2 lakh further if i assume that the assc has also contributed for atc 1.5 lakh which is the maximum threshold atd say 25000 atccd 1b maximum 50000 attttb attttb for saving bank interest deduction 10000 now here you find that 15 lakh 40000 is total income in old regime and 1975 is total income under new regime now the tax on total income if i combine further the amount of hec health and education says under the old regime is 285 480 whereas under the new regime it is 3 lakh 4000 so how much assc is still saving under the old regime 18720 so this is a figure which proves a kind of situation where the assc may be more beneficial in the old regime as compared to being governed by new regime now one more point my dear friends that is one more example again here i have reduced the amount of total income from 20 to 15 that is salary income standard deduction again both the cases home loan interest same saving bank interest same here the gross total income of assc is 1275 here it is 1470 suppose if i further assume atc contribution is there attd 25000 nps 50000 attttb 10000 you will find total income under the old regime is 10 lakh 40000 whereas under the new regime it is 1475 now if i compute the tax liability it comes to 129480 under the old regime and under the new regime after enhancing it by health and education says it comes to 1 lakh 50800 so finally assc is still saving under the old regime by 21320 so this again establishes that it is not always that new regime is going to be beneficial because the total income computation under the both of the regimes is different my dear friend that's why even the assc may have the total income lesser in old regime and it may give him lesser tax liability as compared to new regime now let us answer this question also who should opt for new slab rate this is again important question because we have earlier seen who should offer old slab rate now here let's discuss who should offer new slab rate. if an assc is not paying any house rent because he may not be paying any rent he may be residing in his self residence own residence not paying any home loan interest for self occupied property those who have not availed any home loan who is not paying any nps contribution who is not contributing towards the pf lic policy related premium tuition fees etc and who has also not made any other tax contribution like atg atd and who is not having any substantial interest income of attta etc then in that case the assc should certainly be more beneficial in new slab rate as compared to old slab rate for i move further my dear friends in an example format i thought that okay what are the incentives for opting the new tax regime and i found that there are three main incentives for opting in the new tax regime as compared to old one 
won the higher rebate under section 87A because under the old regime, the 87A rebate is 12,500. Whereas in the new regime, the rebate amount is enhanced to 25,000. So there is a substantial gap. But this thumb rule applies only up to total income of 7 lakh, not beyond. Higher basic exam element. You have already seen with me at the beginning of this video that in old regime, slab rate 2.5 lakh up to amount is exempt, that is nil tax liability will be there. Whereas under the new tax regime, if your total income is up to rupees 3 lakh, then still the tax liability is nil. So that is one beneficial point. Scope of claiming a standard deduction. See, earlier version of new tax regime was such under which the standard deduction was not allowed to the employee class. But with this change which is made by budget 2023, even in the new regime, you are entitled to claim a standard deduction benefit of 50,000. So this is, uh, I can say that these three points are there, which prompts a person to think of that, okay, it may be my case that new tax regime may be more beneficial to me. Now let me give one example where you will find that old regime compared with the new regime and new regime tax liability would be lower. Here it is just, I can say that these are imaginary figures only, but this is just to make up your mind that okay, yes, there are certain circumstances as per old example, wherein the old regime was beneficial. And this is the case where we are discussing the new regime will be more beneficial. Say salary again, I start with 20 lakh rupees. Standard deduction 50,000, salary income 1950, both the scenarios. Suppose rather than 2 lakh here, the associate has home loan interest of 1 lakh only. 25,000, I have again assumed saving bank interest. So gross total in income here is 1875, here it is 1975. ATC deduction 150, ATD 25,000, I assume no ATC CD by the associate and ATTDB is automatically 10,000 maximum. So here the total income is lower as compared to new regime. But you find that ultimate tax liability under the old regime is 332, whereas under the new regime it is 34,200. So finally, SSC is still saving under the new regime by 28,080 rupees. So there are cases when the new regime would be beneficial and there are cases when the old regime will be more beneficial. This is the actual fact which will let you know that in your case whether the old regime or the new regime will be more beneficial. To explain my points in a more precise manner, my dear friends, I am trying to put up my point with the help of a chart. Suppose if we are talking about a salaried employee and in this table, there are deductions which are mentioned this side and the gross income figures which are mentioned this side. And we are trying to understand that, okay, whether the old regime or the new regime will be beneficial to the assessor. So till an assessor earns up to gross income of rupees 5,50,000, and the deduction contributed is zero, he will be having the same position, maybe whatever is his contribution under the old regime and new regime. Suppose the income further enhanced to 7 lakh rupees and the SSC contributes zero amount towards the deductions, tax contribution like ATC, NPS, etc. Then by default, new regime will be more beneficial. As you already know, up to 7 lakh total income under the new slab regime, the tax liability will be nil. However, if with 7 lakh rupees gross total income, the assessee is having deductions up to 1,38,500 contribution, then the old regime may be more beneficial. To raise my point further, suppose I enhance my income level to rupees 9,50,000. Here you will find that if the assessee is contributing up to rupees 2,37,500 into the tax contribution, then by that level, the SSC's tax liability under the old and new regime will be same. But moment SSC enhances about 237,500, say he moves to 250,000, 262,500, 272,500 kind of deductions, then you will see the old regime will be more beneficial to the SSC. So there are chances of getting lower tax liability in old regime provided your deduction quantum is on a higher side. That is a very important point which you need to understand. Okay, let me example on the last point, say 16 lakh rupees gross income of an SSE. Here you will find if he is contributing up to rupees 3 lakh 75,000 for tax deduction, he will be at 375 dot 
equivalent at old and new regime. But suppose if he is contributing lesser, then by default in all the cases, new regime is more beneficial. So this is a thought process to be adopted in this manner that those who will contribute more towards tax deductions will be or may be in good position to be lower tax liable person under old regime as compared to those who are not contributing towards the tax related contribution they will be more beneficial with the with the new regime now similar to salaried employee i have put up this chart or table for non salaried employee also or non salaried persons also here again the deductions are mentioned this side gross income only difference is you will find 50000 rupees gross income further reduced because in the case of salaried person a standard deduction is allowed but for non salaried person a standard deduction is not permitted now let's pick up this example of 10 lakh if a non salaried person is having gross income up to 10 lakh and he is contributing nil towards the deduction or 1 lakh 1 lakh 50000 162 500 etc then till those level the assessee's tax liability under the new regime was beneficial at 262 500 contribution level his tax liability will be same and beyond that if he contributes then he will be more beneficial in the old regime so an assessee may look into that and opt for the relevant regime in his case now three important points or i may say key points to help you for choosing a regime i can say this is the very important portion of this video in case your total deductions are rupees 1.5 lakh or less by default new regime should be more beneficial in case of total deductions are more than 3.57 lakh old regime should be more beneficial in your case and when your total deductions are between 1.5 lakh to 3.75 lakh the selection would depend upon the income level as well as the contribution which he has made for tax saving related incentives so this is one way of understanding okay which regime you are going to opt for before i conclude my dear friends three important points queries or suggestion format which were in my mind i thought i will be sharing with you an option claim before employer may be changed while filing itr yes sir no issues suppose before the employer you wish to claim old regime while filing itr you want to change new regime you can do do that vice versa is also possible what if declaration is given to employer but no contribution made by the year end suppose you opted for old regime with the employer but you could not make contribution then at the year end the employer if finds that you are not able to provide contribution related receipts then he will straight away apply new regime on you and deduct tax on the balance amount accordingly please don't forget to invest even when no deductions are allow, allow, allowable this is a very important point sir the new regime does not give any tax incentive for making tax contributions to save the tax liability so therefore the chances are that if some forceful saving used to happen in the case of assessees that may come down for them whereas in india the saving habits have been good and they help us in the turbulent times so i always suggest that even if the tax incentives are not available please don't forget to invest for your future. finally my dear friends through this video i try to put up my case before you that please don't understand that straight away one regime is going to be beneficial and other one is not this question answer would depend upon the facts and circumstances of your case you apply them and accordingly decide which is going to be beneficial regime in your case so i hope the content of this video would have been beneficial to you thank you very much for being with me wishing you all the best jai